Carson Wentz was a Dallas Cowboy. What if there was a Dallas 500, a.k.a. King Brokeback? And every video, he would start off eating his mayonnaise sandwich. Let me put down this mayonnaise sandwich. Howdy, cow poke. Listen, I hear the reckon we're going to double square dance that butt tonight. Tank, 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 tank. If Carson Wentz was a Dallas Cowboy, he would have won MVP despite missing three games last year. If Carson Wentz was a Dallas Cowboy, they would have won or be on the verge of a Super Bowl title. If Carson Wentz was a Dallas Cowboy, they wouldn't run that boring, vanilla, stupid offense that they run now. If Carson Wentz was a Dallas Cowboy, he would be the greatest thing since sliced bread. If Carson Wentz was a Dallas Cowboy, we all would be... Yo everybody, how you doing? King Ding back here. So I don't know how many of you remember when Dick Vermeil was in broadcasting. He was in broadcasting for a lot of years after being the Eagles head coach and then getting burned out. He went into broadcasting, he was there a long time and decided he wanted to coach again. Now, when he was getting ready to come back as a head coach, the first place that it looked like he was going to go. And they were really close to getting him was the Philadelphia Eagles. They were talking. He was getting ready to come back. And then there was a hiccup over power, over who would get to make the decision about personnel. Uh, Dick Vermeil wanted that right. The Eagles didn't want to give it to him. And they chose not to hire him. And Vermeil, he went to St. Louis Rams and wind up winning a Super Bowl with them while the Eagles hired Andy Reid, came close, but never got there. Now, I often wonder many times, what would have happened if the Eagles would have hired Dick Vermeil? Would they have won a Super Bowl or would they not have? Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is because history is riddled with teams having different points in time in which they have a decision to make that will affect their future. So if we fast forward into time to the 2016 draft, I believe we hit another one of these markers, another one of these moments in time that will change the direction of a couple franchises. And those franchises are the Philadelphia Eagles and the Dallas Cowboys. And the player to change their fortunes is Carson Wentz. Now, if you guys remember, early in the draft process, Carson was considered a mid to late first round pick. Jared Goff, around the same. None of these quarterbacks were expected to go that early. And then what happened was that there was the Senior Bowl. And during the Senior Bowl, the Dallas Cowboys had the opportunity to coach Carson Wentz. And they loved him. They loved him. They were enamored. I remember watching NFL Network, the Cowboy. All they would talk about is Carson Wentz, Carson Wentz, Carson Wentz. Everybody knew that they loved this kid. And after that Senior Bowl, his stock went up. It went up and people were thinking top 10 pick in the draft. And so what did the Eagles do? Because the Eagles were really enamored with this kid too. The Eagles, they traded up to eight from, I believe, 13 or 14. I can't remember what was the exact number. But they trade up to, I believe, eight with the Miami Dolphins. And they think that they're in a position to get Carson Wentz. They think that they have a good shot at this point to get him. If they have to trade up, they, they're in a position to do it. So the Eagles, it sounds like they really like Carson Wentz. And all we keep hearing is how the Dallas Cowboys, they love Carson Wentz. They love Carson Wentz. They can't get enough of Carson Wentz. Now, if you guys don't believe me, Cowboy fans going, this isn't true, just go back and look. It, it's, it's the fact. Almost every mock draft at some point started to have Carson Wentz going to the Dallas Cowboys. And what happened was, as the process for the draft continued, both Goff and Wentz started to rise. And then the St. Louis Rams made a huge trade. They made a huge trade up to number one to land Jared Goff. Now this created a problem for teams like the Eagles who thought that one of those two quarterbacks would probably be there at eight. So the Eagles, in this position where if they don't do something, they're not gonna get him. 
they had to make a huge, huge decision. Do we trade up or do we stay? Now, if you remember in the 90s when the Cowboys won three Super Bowls, right? They won Super Bowls on aggressiveness. They had a coach, Jim Johnson, who came in and changed the draft process. He changed the way teams value draft picks. Um, Jerry Jones and him, they trade Herschel Walker, they get a boatload of picks. They did a lot of things that were unorthodox, that weren't expected, and they built their team through it. Then, in the later years, Jerry Jones continued to do a lot of these things. He continued to sign free agents. I mean, you remember the Super Bowl run, they had signed guys like Deion Sanders, Charles Haley. They had, they were aggressive, the Dallas Cowboys. But, in recent years, they were aggressive and it was backfiring on them. So you saw Jerry Jones kind of change the way he was, kind of change his aggressiveness. And when he did that and he was sitting at four, the Eagles took advantage of a huge situation. What team would get this guy? The advantage was on the Dallas Cowboys because it was clear by this point the Browns didn't want Carson Wentz. They weren't going to take him. They might have took Bosa. They might have took Jalen Ramsey. Who knows? But Carson Wentz, for all intents and purposes, most likely would have fell to at least four and to the Dallas Cowboys. Who would have drafted him? I'm sure of it. But the Eagles, they said, we got to stop being the team that sits and waits for things to happen. You see, in the 90s, the Eagles sat and they waited for things to happen, while the Dallas Cowboys were always aggressive and they were winning. Well, things changed. The Eagles jumped the Cowboys to two. They jumped them. And this move sent shockwaves through the NFL, sent shockwaves through Philly. I don't know what it did for Dallas, but it was a huge changing point for the Philadelphia Eagles franchise, for the Dallas Cowboys franchise, because the Eagles were not the team sitting there waiting for something to happen. It was the Cowboys. They sat and they waited, and the Eagles outmaneuvered them, and they took Carson Wentz. And by taking Carson Wentz, the whole franchise changed. The whole mindset of the franchise changed. The Eagles, they go into their second year, they go and they win a Super Bowl. Yes, Carson didn't play. He got hurt. But they would never have gotten there if he wasn't so awesome in the regular season like he was. He came out of that Rams game, which was one of the most high-pressure situations you could put a young quarterback in. He played his butt off, carried the team, and got the Eagles a division win. So this changed the course of both these franchises. Now, I know that there's some Dallas Cowboy fans are saying, dude, you're crazy. We wanted Dak. Dak is a fourth round pick, whatever. We would have taken Zeke. You weren't going to take Zeke. You were going to take a quarterback. No way in hell. Every my, Everybody knew you guys loved Carson Wentz. It was just the way it is. Okay. Now, I always argue with Cowboy fans about Dak and Carson debate, but the problem is when they debate this, they have to use the rookie season of Dak Prescott to make the argument. And to me, that doesn't really count because what you're doing is you're assuming that both of these guys starting point in the NFL are at the same place. They are not. The rookie years are for learning. Carson had a lot more learning and adjusting to do than Dak Prescott. So you can't really use that year one. But what we can use is the progression from year one to year two. Where was Dak Prescott's progression? Where is Carson Wentz's progression? Carson Wentz is progressing the way you would expect a franchise elite game-changing quarterback to progress. And that's what he did. Now, if things were different, if the Eagles would have stayed, the Cowboys would have drafted Carson Wentz. No doubt about it. The Cowboys would now be feared, and I would be so scared to play this team, because they would have literally, in my opinion, the best young quarterback in football. Now, a lot of people think I say it because I'm an Eagle fan and I like Carson Wentz, but it's not the case. The case and the truth is, is he's that good. You know, he just happens to finally, it's finally on our team. We finally have a player on our team that is that guy. But the Cowboys changed their philosophy somewhere. They've lost trust in their co- in their owner, in the decisions that they make, and they became a team that waits. Here's another example of the Cowboys waiting. This year in the draft, Jason Witten retires. Jason Witten retires. What do the Cowboys do? 
the Cowboys sit and wait as the Eagles jump them and take Dallas Goddard. If the Cowboys were smart, if they needed a tight end that bet, they should have gone and got him. I believe Cowboys of the past, years in the past, with their aggressiveness, they would have. And in the end, the decision to draft Carson Wentz, the decision to make that trade, in my opinion, is the reason why the Eagles have won a Super Bowl already, already won a Super Bowl, and will win probably a lot more because that decision changed the course of the Eagles' history. That decision also has hurt the Cowboys in the in their history and their future that is coming. Now, they've got their five dusty old Super Bowl rings. We all know it. But when are they going to get another one? I don't think they're close. I think they're in a situation where they're going to have to have a coaching change after this year. Now, I love playing with the Dallas Cowboy fans. I love you know, busting balls, busting chops. It's fun. It's all in good fun. But in all seriousness, I think that the Cowboys didn't get Carson Wentz will come back and haunt them as it already is. While with the Eagles, they will flourish for this decision. Um, things have changed in the NFL. The Eagles are now the aggressive team. The Cowboys are the team that sits and waits. So what do you think? I know some of the Cowboy fans aren't going to agree, but it's just my honest opinion. Now, before I change this subject, I'm going to address the counter argument that I know is going to come. And it's going to be, we wouldn't have taken Carson Wentz. We would have took Jalen Ramsey or Bosa. Those two guys are the guys we would have taken. Well, if that's the case, okay, maybe you're right. Let's say you're right. If that's the case, then it's even a more monumental disaster of a decision that you've made. You never pass up on a generational quarterback like Carson Wentz for any other position. He would be the most valuable player there. And if the Cowboys would have passed up on him, then they were even bigger dingbats than we already thought. Because you can't pass up on a quarterback like him. Okay? The only way the Cowboys get out of this whole situation, the only way that you can win this argument is Dak Prescott has to be something special. He has to become something special. And we're going to find out a lot more about Dak Prescott this year. If he does, then you are then you guys win the argument. If he doesn't, if we base things on how we saw him last year, you're not winning the argument. And you don't take Jalen Ramsey, and you don't take Bosa over a quarterback like Carson Wentz. Because no matter where Carson would have gone, he was going to flourish. Well, at practice today, there were a few things that stood out to me. The first thing is, how many guys are nicked up with minor injuries? Nick Foles, Zach Ertz, Shelton Gibson, Marcus Wheaton, Mike Wallace, and a few other guys did not practice. Now, this was a light practice, only about an hour, hour and a half, because it was very hot outside. Plus, the Eagles do have a preseason game Thursday, which I will be live streaming, so please join me for that. But... It was a light practice nonetheless. Now, Kamar Aiken, he got some reps with the first team, and he looked pretty good. I heard good things over the last few days with him. Maybe he's getting comfortable. And then Dallas Goddard continues to dominate and continues to be unstoppable in everything that he does. He looked great, too. Now, on the defensive side of the ball, I heard good things about Trey Sullivan, which I've heard all camp. I think that safety spot is pretty much done. I think you got your four guys already set in uh, Malcolm Jenkins, Rodney McLeod, Corey Graham back, and then Trey Sullivan. I think Jeremy Rees will end up on the practice squad, and Maragos may be the guy who's, you know, man out. Then you got um, that linebacker battle. I heard for the third spot is between two guys, Kruger Hill and Knight Jerry, Gary, whatever you want to call him. But those two are battling for that third linebacker spot. It's going to be a very interesting preseason to watch these guys battle. Corey Nelson, I have not heard anything on. It's been very quiet. He hasn't looked great. And, you know, we'll have to keep our eye on. But the Eagles will be playing Thursday. So we're going to get to see how some of these guys who have been great in practices, how they play in a preseason game. And that's pretty much the way practice went today. With that said, I hope everybody has a great day. Talk to you later. And don't be a dingbat.